Good morning, YouTubians. It's Kermit's Ghost. It's Monday, and that's a Blu-ray release day here in the UK. Added bonus today is that we don't have to wear our masks indoors. Fantastic news. Fantastic. I wore it. I socially distanced from everybody, and I still caught the bloody virus. So I thought those masks were useless to start with. But let's not go down that rabbit hole. Going to head up to HMV, see what they got. Don't think there's anything I'm after in HMV. All my stuff has arrived by post already because uh, HMV don't stock these particular titles. So I'm gonna head up to my daughter's house first and see her little pug Ernie again, see how much he's grown and developed. And then I'll go up to town and get a nice muck latte, you know the line. And then we'll head into HMV and see all the latest releases. And then I'll take you back and show you what I picked up. I'll see you all in a bit. But before we do go in HMV, gotta get myself a nice hot mat latte. I know it's 30 degrees outside, but you gotta have a hot coffee to start your day. Well, that is one big gumball machine, but we are not here to see that. We're here to see what is new and trending today in HMV. So we're gonna head straight over to the new and trending section, which for some reason the sign is perched above the anime films. The first film we are seeing is Swimming with Sharks. This is released through Fabulous Films from 1994. 1999, I don't think so. You can pick this up on Amazon for 12.99. Although there is a 20% sale on today, so it would actually cost you 15.99. Still a little bit overpriced though. The next one is a Final Cut Entertainment release from 1968. It's 139 minutes and it is The Charge of the Light Brigade. Although it is priced at $14.99, take this to the till and it will cost you $11.99. Great cast in this film. Over in the anime section, and these are also on sale. I think every film in the shop is on sale at the moment. We have Killing Bites. This is season one from 2018, released through MVM Entertainment. Although it's priced at $34.99, you're going to get it a lot cheaper than that in store. Probably cheaper than Amazon, actually. Well, like I said, everything is on sale in the shop. Arrow titles are already on sale, so they're excluded from the 20% off, but they're pretty much $7.99 per film anyway, so that's a pretty good deal. That's pretty much half price, and they've got some really good titles in store. And also, you've got the 2 for 15 on the premium line as well as 20% off all Criterion movies. So, as I said, sale on throughout the shop today. And this sale of 20% off carries on until Sunday, according to staff. So we're going to head into the 4K section now and there was supposed to be an Arrow release of True Romance. First time I believe Arrow have put out a 4K but as I said before 20% of everything that includes the 4K and we have Ran here from 1985, 162 minutes released from Studio Canal. 22 99 obviously take it to the till and you'll have 20% taken off. Over in the horror section now, we have Dawn of the Dead. This is not a new release, but I thought I'd pop over here, see how much they were. Three copies, $26.99, not bad, 20% off as well. So there you go with the prices. And I'll end up in HMV with this little bit here because there's no more new releases with this little Grogu figure. <laughs> And 
And if you press his label button one more time, this happens with his hand. Not sure what that's all about. So let's go home. Hey everybody, welcome back. Three titles to show you. Well, technically this one's got three films on it separately. So there's five films to show you. So we're gonna crack straight on with it. So the first thing I wanna show you is this three movie set from Eureka. It's a Buster Keaton set. Inside you have Our Hospitality, Go West and College. Now all these films uh, I'm gonna show you today arrived Saturday morning and I've watched them all over the weekend. So the first one is Our Hospitality, which was made in 1923. There it is. It's a story of William McKay, a man who inherits a house from his late father. Now the thing is, he knows nothing about his father, nothing about his past, because he grew up with his auntie miles away. And it turns out the family, his estranged family, has been in a feud with another local family. It's actually based on the real life Hatfield and McCoy feud that went on years ago. So Willie is played by Buster Keaton and he thinks the um, property that he's gonna inherit is huge, so he's in for a shock there. So he boards this train called the Rocket, which is based on Stevenson's locomotive. And by the way, it's a great look at the past and how it was back then. I mean, it's basically three horse carriages strapped together in a three in a row, pulled by a really small steam engine. Now, obviously, in this film, there is a love interest, as there usually is in Buster Keaton's movies, and it's actually a fellow passenger, and I won't say any more than that. There's lots of spectacular stunt work in this, and I'm talking about the waterfall rescue. I watched this with an audio commentary, as uh, it's a silent movie, and it's nice to have like an audio track going along, and it offers up a great insight. It's a seven-reel film with a runtime of 77 minutes. So the next film, my God, the glare off the floor. Uh, the next film is Go West from 1925, and it's got a runtime of 69 minutes. And in it, Buster is playing a drifter called Friendless. Now he's traveling across America looking for work because he's completely penniless. So he jumps on this train as it's going past uh, to get free passage. And while he's on there, he hides inside a barrel. But being a Buster Keaton film, it rolls off and it happens to smash right in front of a ranch where he gets a job. Now he sees a cow on this ranch that can't give milk and he bonds with it gives it the name brown eyes and he looks after it now obviously he is completely inept because he's got no experience handling cattle and the rest of the ranch handlers take an instant dislike to him the image on the front here is from go west as buster is trying to win money to buy brown eyes and save her from the slaughterhouse but he notices that the game is rigged but he loses anyway in this film again it's peppered with stunt work but this time the love interest isn't directed at a woman it's directed at brown eyes oh and there's um, an uncredited um, appearance in this by Roscoe Arbuckle old fatty Arbuckle as a woman in a lift you've also got his father his wife and his son they all appear in the movie as well great film so the last in the set is college and for me this was my absolute favorite they're all very good but that was the most entertaining here you've got Buster playing Ronald who is a top student but one that isn't particularly liked by his fellow students as he says in a leaving speech at school that sports are a complete waste of time and academia is the way forward so finishing high school, he, his love interest, and the love rival, the jock, all head off to college together, where the dean of the new school wants everybody to follow Ronald's philosophy. But Ronald's love interest, Mary, played by Anne Cornwall, wants a sporty boyfriend. So Ronald tries out for all these different types of sports, kind of like Danny Zuko in Greece, and fails miserably. Now the dean, played by Snitz Edwards, understands that Ronald just wants to get the girl, and he puts him in the rowing team. Meanwhile, Mary is held captive by the love rival, Jeff, played by Harold Goodwin, and he's trying to get her expelled so she'll marry him. Quite an unusual tactic, I grant you. But she manages to get a phone call to Ronald anyway for help and he races over obstacles like bushes, emulating hurdles and long jumps, that kind of thing. And finally he grabs a washing line pole, pole vaulting in through the first floor straight into a room for the rescue. Now Buster did every single stunt that he can get his hands on but he couldn't get the grips with the pole vault and he used Lee Barnes who was a stunt uh, standing and he was an Olympic pole vaulter at the time. Now fortunately on college there is no audio commentary but there is a 10 minute making of which was fascinating to see. So that was the three Buster Keaton films from Eureka. Let's take a look inside. So inside you get three discs. Each film is on a separate disc. Both the front artwork and the inner artwork is from Go West and you get a 32 page book as well. Now I suggest you watch the first two films with audio commentary because you don't need sound for it. You get the music playing in the background and the audio commentaries really do add a lot of insight. So that was the Buster Keaton set from Eureka. The next film is Revenge of Frankenstein. This is from Indicator and again, this arrived Saturday and I watched it over the weekend. Absolutely love Hamahara films. 
This one is a direct sequel to Curse of Frankenstein. It starts where the other one ended with the guillotine execution. But instead of Frankenstein, as it would have been a really short film, a priest is beheaded in his place. Now, Peter Cushion reprises his role as the mad doctor once again, and he set up a medical practice elsewhere. And is in his absolute arrogance, he's actually working under his new name, Dr. Steen. There's a great scene at the start of the film with two inept grave robbers looking for Frankenstein's corpse. They open the coffin lid and the doctor appears in the shadows and actually scares one of the two diggers to death. Anyway, so he set up this new practice and he's treating the poor, refusing to join the medical council, much to their annoyance. And he even has a hunchback assistant. And he's, he's kind of progressing his medical prowess somewhat and he's now transplanting brains. So he transplants the brain of the hunchback assistant, Carl, into a cadaver played by Michael Gwen. I won't say any more than that. It's a fun-filled film with lots of character. Picture quality is pretty good too, and the film itself is 90 minutes from 1958. Let's take a look inside. So inside you have artwork on the disc. There's a better look at the cover without the glare. And you have titles available there as well. I think The Damned came out today, and so did The Two Faces of Dr. Jekyll. So that was The Revenge of Frankenstein. And the last title is The Ghoul. This is from 1933 and stars Boris Konoff in his first British film. And this is considered to be the first talking horror film ever. The prints were lost for a number of years and then they found one in Czechoslovakia and restored it. It's also the first British film to be labelled as horrific. Now in it, Boris plays Professor Morland who is an Egyptologist and he's on his deathbed and he wishes to be taken to the afterlife by Anubis. So he's set up this whole ritual to be carried out upon his demise. He's got this jewel that's got to be bandaged in his clasped right hand so he can offer it as a gift to the gods. He's got this Egyptian tomb built on the grounds of his house, as you do. But obviously, things don't quite go to plan and the jewel is taken, forcing him to come back from the dead and seek revenge on everyone. Now, it's a horror film from the 30s, so you can expect women screaming throughout. The acting's really theatrical and the whole film is set over one night and mostly lit by candlelight. This is a talkie, as I mentioned before, and Boris does deliver dialogue at the start. Only until he dies, becomes the ghoul, then it's just grunting and moaning. The film's got a runtime of one hour, 20 minutes. Oh, and as a side note, it's written by Ronald Pertwee. Now his son, John, went on to play Doctor Who, and in turn, his son, Sean, is now an actor who features in a lot of horror films, Circle of Life. Let's take a look inside. So this is really nice inside. You've got artwork on the disc. There's a 12 page book, it doesn't really deal much with the film, it deals mainly with Boris and his relationships and promoting the film and his family, how they received him after he came come back to England, that kind of thing. And on the inside you have what looks like original posters throughout the world for the ghoul. So that is it, lots of old films today, I think the youngest was from 1958. If you've got any comments or questions, leave them down below. I will get back to you, I promise. Give the video a thumbs up, it really does help the channel. And subscribe if you haven't, it's all free. Why wouldn't you? And on that note, all that's left to say is thank you for choosing my channel today and watching my video. Take care, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.